Today, our main topic is going to be how to create a custom title block using Fusion 360. So this is kind of an example of what our final product will look like. The first thing you want to do is go up here to your file and say New Drawing, and then New Drawing Template. And you'll want to save from scratch. You'll have several options there, but you'll save from scratch. You'll check your standard to be ASME, then your units to be whatever you want. Typically, it's inches for us in, in our Project Lead the Way courses. And then our sheet size, there's several there. Um, if you have legal size, you know, you could use that. Most of us just have regular paper. This one, eight, eight and a half by 11, would give you a portrait style. I always use the 11 by eight and a half. And when we click OK, we'll get us a brand new screen up. This is the default title bar that Fusion gives you. For what we use in class, we need as much space as we can to get get all the details of the drawing. So we're going to work on this title bar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to where it says Sheet Settings, and I'm going to expand that. And then I'm going to right click where it says Title Block, ANSI Title Block. So I'll right click that, and I'm going to say New Title Block. And from here, you want to make sure that this says from scratch because we're going to create a brand new one. You do have options to import others. So like later on down the road, if you have one you want to use, you could. Then you could also use it from a DWG, so more of a standard AutoCAD file. I'm going to say PLTW template. And because I've made a couple of these before, I'm just going to put a number beside it. And hit OK. What we really want to do here is just kind of zoom in on the bottom. Every four blocks equates out to an inch. So I'm going to go about an inch tall, and I'm just going to draw a line across here. Now you notice the snap grid's in place right now, and that's actually pretty helpful. I'm actually going to leave an empty spot there because I'm going to show you how to put a logo in there. So I'm kind of sectioning it off like this. And the first thing I'm going to do is put project name in. So I'm going to use text and go down here and just kind of snap in. I'm just going to draw a text box just like we would in Word or PowerPoint. I'm going to say project name. And I hit close over here. And then I can click on that and click on this box. And if I zoom in, I can kind of move it around. Now notice it's snapping too. So for now, I'm going to, I'm going to uncheck the snap to grid box. And that's going to allow me a little more freedom to move things in. What I've learned is that if you zoom in more, you can place it a little bit better. That's actually right where I want it. So now I'm going to go up here to attribute. So I want this to automatically collect the project name. I'm going to go down here and put it about where I want it. And over here where it says drawn by, I'm going to select project name. And then it'll come up there. And what that'll do is automatically collect that. So I'm going to hit close. And now I'm going to use the pan tool here. Let's kind of move over a little bit. Project name is going to take the folder you're working in and put it there. Now I'm going to grab the line tool and come over here. And remember, every four big blocks is an inch. So there's, there's a two inch span there. Here's my eighth line. So I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to straighten that up. And then I'm going to go back to text again. And I'm going to zoom in this time because Snap 2 Grid's not on. I'm going to actually click where I want it to go. So I'm going to actually start right about here and draw a text box. And this one's going to be called Title. And I hit Close. I'm going to pan over some. And I'm going to go back up here to Attributes and just kind of place it down here below. So on this one, this one I can collect automatically again by clicking in the attribute and saying Title 1. I hit a close. Now I'm going to pan over some more. And for the next one, I'm going to put Drawn By. So remember, zooming in really can make a big difference. Then you don't have to go back and place these in the future. This one's going to be my Drawn By. 
So drawn by. Now if you notice, I didn't make that quite big enough. I'm just going to stretch it out here. Now I'm going to go up to attribute because this one we can also collect automatically. And I'm going to actually select drawn by and hit close. I'm going to pan over again, and I want to pay attention over there to make sure that that's a 90 degree angle. That's why that line's not really straight. And then I'm going to say draw on date. So I'm going to zoom in again, and I'm going to say about right here is where I want that text to show up. Draw on date. Then we'll go to attributes because that one can be collected automatically. And this one will say drawn date. Well, the date's not such a huge box. So, what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and put like scale or sheet number here. So, I'm going to take a line and go about right here. And I'll go ahead and put some text in. And for this one, I'm just going to type in the word scale. Hit close. This one, again, I can put an attribute to. And I'm going to say for drawn date, I'm going to go down here and hit drawing scale. And hit close. And I think while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and draw another line because scale is not really a big, big space taker. And for this, I'll put sheet number. And hit close. I'm going to pan over a little bit. And I'll go to attributes again. And for this one, I'll go down to sheet number. So, so far, I've got quite a few of the, the attributes I really want. And for this one, what I'll do is I'll put sheet size. This one is another automatic contributor or an automatic attribute. So for this one, I'll put paper size. And what I'll do here is I'll just simply divide this one. And then what we always do is do a, a kind of a peer review on everything. So I'll say checked by, and I'm actually going to leave this one blank. That's not an attributed thing that we can use. So I'll leave that one as so, and then I'll come over here, put one more text in. And this one will be checked date. What we found for the most part, the hardest part of this is just getting the spacing right. And the reason that's such a difficult thing is because it's up to everybody's individual taste and preference. So if I zoom out, you can see what we have. What I'm going to do is actually put a logo in, in this little box here. So to do that, I'm going to go up here to insert. And I'm just going to place it here for now. Obviously, that's not even on the paper, and it's way too big. So I'm going to use scale, and then I'm going to use the distance and just move it over. I found that starting with a negative one for me tends to help, and then I can go from there and just kind of scoot it over to where it looks about right. And I can even use the Y distance, too, if I'd like. Then I'd hit OK. Once I get things the way I want them, that's when I'll finally click Finish Title Block. And you'll see there it is. Now one very important step before we move forward is we want to hit save. And we'll give this a name. You may actually want to create a new project and call it drawing templates. Because you may have more than one as the year goes on. And then save into that folder. Okay, so your template is saved. Now what we found, the easiest way to use this thing is to actually 
open up your project. So whatever part file you're going to do or assembly. So I'm going to open this up. This is the base block. I can close that out, get it out of the way. And what I'll do is I'll go up here to say file and I'll say new drawing. And I'll say from design. And over here, I'm going to go to where it says from scratch. And I'm going to actually pick that title title block. If it doesn't show up, remember I can go to browse and I can go to the folder I saved it in. So remember I saved it in drawing templates and there it pulled up drawing templates and I can just tell it to use that. And I'll hit select and hit OK. And notice down there at the bottom all that stuff that we told it to automatically select. Right now my scale is set one to two. I always try to go one to one if possible. So I can place that then I'll right click and say projected view. It asks, it's asking me to select the parent view, so I'll say, all right, that one. Then I can right click and then left click to place. Come over here, left click. Come up here for the ISO, left click. Once I'm done placing all my views, I'm going to right click and say, OK. Typically, we make the ISO a shaded one, so I can double click that and come up here to the shaded view and then hit close and then from there it's just a matter of dimensioning which we'll cover in a different video